For this video, I wanted to try something different than I've done in my other videos. The idea is that I'll take a current event or something that I've read in the news and give you my thoughts and analysis on it. And if you like it, I'll do more of them. I recently read about YouTube's 2021 slate of Foundry artists. Foundry is YouTube's global artist development program. And I'm always curious how each artist made their way into the program. Some of the biggest artists that have come out of the Foundry program are Dua Lipa, Ra Alejandro, Gunna, Rosalia, and Cave Town. The Foundry program started as video creator workshops for musicians in 2016, but in 2019 evolved into a global program. If you haven't explored these programs before, most of the big companies have them. Apple has Up Next, Spotify has Radar, TikTok has Spotlight, and it's not just the big giants. Other big players get into these artist development programs too like publishers and radio companies, gear companies like Fender, blogs like Rolling Stone, airlines, mobile phone providers, and even governments like Canada with its Factor Spotlight. Hey, I'm Todd. I was a longtime label manager for independent label Fearless Records and a former VP of sales at Sony Music. Most of my years in the music industry have been spent developing artists from the ground up, and I'm still doing that today helping artists earn a living from their music. All the tips you'll find on my channel come from testing thousands of track releases and from my record label experience. All right, mash that subscribe button and hit the bell so you don't miss any of my videos. This video is specifically about YouTube's Music Foundry program. And when I first looked at the list for the 2021 class, it started off on a bad note. Uh, this first artist, Amber Lucid, is signed by 300 Entertainment, which is Lior Cohen's label um, and he's now the head of YouTube Global Music Program. So um, if that doesn't scream nepotism, I don't know what does. But it got better from there. After I really looked at the list, um, it's truly a diverse list of you know, major indie and unsigned artists. Uh, there's, there's 27 artists. I think five of them were unsigned. Um, the, the bulk of them were on indie labels. Um, but there's also a, a really good diversity in genre and in country. I'd go so far to say that this is the best effort I've seen for a corporate artist development program. And there's many. Vivo's artist development program is called Discover, and it's been around for a while, and it's almost entirely major label artists. Rolling Stone has a program called Global Spotlight, and it's 90% U.S. artists, so not very global. Okay, let's take a closer look at the list here. The headings are artist, country, label type, and the record company where I knew it. Uh, I've also color coded it, so like blue is indie label, black is major label, and green is unsigned. Next, let's look at the list by country. It's pretty much got all continents covered. Australia, South America, there's Canada, um, Europe mostly UK and Germany for Europe. Europe wasn't too represented, but it's got some Asian countries, Japan, South Korea, um, Spain is in there, and then UK and USA is here. Now let's look at it by label type. Uh, there's five unsigned artists, I think there's eight major label artists, and then a bunch of indie label signed artists. And this is a pretty good spread, I'm, I'm happy to see this spread here. And one thing that stuck out to me when I was looking into these artists is two of the unsigned artists were with The Orchard for distribution and on Pulse Publishing. So that was really interesting to me. By the way, it's really easy to find out more about the artist team directly from their YouTube videos. So I went to the Foundry list page here on YouTube and in the description they list the different artists. So if we just pick like Paris, Tech, Paris Texas here um, and then go to the video itself, then scroll down to the team here. And this is where it says the Orchard Music, that's how you know their distribution on behalf of the band, and Pulse Recording is for the music publishing. So that's a good way to tell who the team is. One last thing I'll say about the list is, although it's five unsigned artists, which is pretty good, 22 were on some sort of record label. So that sends a clear message to artists that are trying to get into this program. One of the program leads said something about this in an article in Music Week. I want to give a shout out to Music Week. They've been covering the Foundry program for years 
and it's a great resource. I'll link to it in the description below. Speaking about UK indie artist Arlo Parks, Naomi at YouTube said she had a clear talent for content and a team that was prepared to support her and make the most of resources. These two points are key. YouTube is a video platform, so they're looking for artists that are already utilizing video in their strategy. And the second point explains why 22 of 27 artists were signed. They want a team that can support the promotion effort, not just labels, but the artist manager as well. So what resources and opportunities does YouTube give Foundry artists? On the YouTube music blog, they mention that artists will receive dedicated partner support from YouTube and seed funding invested into the development of their content. They also say artists partner with YouTube to experiment with content formats and learn best practices for growing and engaging their audience. In addition, they're given access to new YouTube music products to share feedback and help shape future features. So you can see it's not too specific and there's no list of things that the artist is guaranteed. In the case of Arlo, they featured her in their Where Music Grows campaign around the Brits Awards show in London. It's possible YouTube's previous support of Arlo led to the Brit nominee, or it's just that they saw it as an opportunity to tie into her Foundry program support. They put Arlo on a billboard in London to mark that big milestone. They're also supporting her music video. They didn't say specifically how, but since Foundry originated as an educational workshop for musicians, I imagine it's not as simple as a boost or spotlight. They're involved in the pre-production phase all the way through to launch. There's also the visibility from the press releases and on-platform promotion. By now, you're probably wondering about the submission process. They leave that off of any of the program descriptions and the press releases. So I emailed several of the artists included in this year's program. They mentioned that the YouTube Partnerships team reaches out to artist managers, distributors, and record labels a couple of times a year and does a call for applications. There's no particular dates given, so it's best to be proactive and ask your distributor. You should also check with YouTube's Twitter account and the YouTube Creator Academy channel on YouTube. Something else I learned from emailing the artists and their managers is that there's a few rounds of the application process where they narrow it down to a smaller list. YouTube has a few other programs similar to this. One of them is Artist on the Rise, and it's shed some more light on the submissions process. But under selection criteria, it says, the view count and watch time growth and how frequently videos are uploaded are some of the factors we look at. YouTube systems and teams review selections based on these metrics. Also, from the Music Week blog, we heard from one of the YouTube partnership team members, and they said that artists that already place an importance on the visual and video aspect of their promotion are better suited for these programs. So, are you interested in learning any more about these artist development programs? Start a discussion below in the comments. Let me know if there's any other topics you want me to weigh in on. And don't forget to subscribe and check out some of my other playlists about music marketing tips. Thanks again.